So all of your artworks are made of elephant dung, aren't they? Well, that's just one of the mediums that I use. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go back to the beginning. Mm -hmm. I look at myself or I consider myself to be a conceptual artist mm -hmm. in a contemporary sense. Mm -hmm. And my practice involves painting, sculpting, making objects, installations, performance and film. And I use different mediums such as acrylic, collages, and also elephant dung, which has meaning to me or to us as a people in the sense that I come from a tribe whereby the elephant is considered to be our totem animal because when we were migrating thousands of years ago, we followed the path that was created through the jungle by the elephant. And so we took up that positive element about the elephant, you know, being strong and nurturing, having that sense of family. And so I integrated that into my work. So the works that you see behind me were specifically done for SPAC Fair. And uh, it was inspired by the current situation that we're facing in the world today when it comes to conflict, when it comes to uncertainty, when it comes to fear, when it comes to just not knowing what the future holds for us. So the series is called Loud Whispers from the Ancestors. So I brought the issue of the ancestors back into the conversation. What does that mean? It means that the ancestors are inspiring us to go back to where it all started, going back to the beginning of who we are, who are we? What is it? What does it mean to be human? What is it that makes up this? What is this that makes you who you are? So going back to our consciousness, what is thinking, what is sensing, what is perceiving, what is willing, what is our body, what is our soul, and what is the spirit. So this work speaks to that, going back to the makeup of the human, how we connect with ourselves first. And once we start to understand ourselves, then we start to understand the other and know that you know there is a connection and so I bring that spirit of the ancestors into the conversation. And in my works, that's why you also see, you know, the elephant dung that is mixed with pigment. And there's also textile with the hands also, which means a lot. It, the hands could mean blessing for you. There's a lot of color in there. And the color also has significance, which, is, which could be different for you and for me. And in this case, the red would stand for fire, the red would stand for earth, the red would stand for the root chakra that connects us to the, to the planet, that is giving us that security, that, that um, what can I say, stability. And then there's the orange that is within our, our stomach area, which is the creative power that we have. And with we artists, you know, the, the creative power is there within the sacral chakra. And then comes the solar plexus, which is yellow that you see in the works, which is, you know, standing in our personal power. And then the green, which takes us back to that connection that we have, the love, the connection that we have for ourselves, the love that we have for ourselves and for humanity and for everything else around us. And then the turquoise that you see in the colors also stands for our authentic voice. We artists also need that authentic voice, which is found within the thought area. And then the blue that you will see in most of my work is all about imagination, is all about you know envisioning the future, is all about also being creative and our intuition. And then the purple that is in the work is all about the divine, our connection to the divine. And also our ancestors, when they communicate with us, through you know our the, the top of our head giving us the wisdom and the knowledge that we already have within our ourselves you know so this is what it's all about what can you tell us about your sculptures well the objects again are created out of elephant dung 
And uh, the ones that you see with the ball is all about letting go. Because the ancestors also believe that when we come on this planet, we come with a suitcase. And the suitcase has a lot of things in it. And we at times have to get certain things out of the suitcase so that it's lighter as we proceed in life. Because sometimes we carry a lot of stuff in us which stops us from growing or developing. So this works here is about letting go of that. For example, cutting of the cord, which is the bowl with the, with the rope around it. The, the bowl signifies all the shit or all the, the challenges and, and you know, the issues that we carry with us. So there's this practice called cutting of the cord which you go into a meditative state and you imagine all these problems or issues that you have into a ball. And you also imagine that there's a rope that is tied around that, that issue. And then you tie it around, in, all in your imagination, you tie it around your, your waist. And then you imagine you're up on a hill and you have a pair of scissors or a knife and you cut that and then you watch as those issues roll down the hill and that is letting go and especially in this world that we're living in today there are a lot of things that we have to let go that we have to forgive so that we can grow and participate in this lila of life and what uh, what about this hat That was, uh, that was a, a project that we did when I was still at the contextual painting class of Professor Ashley Shell, and it was about disgust. So I brought, came up with the idea of the elephant, again, in certain traditions, also my ancestors, what they used to do with the elephant dung if, let's say, somebody has dementia, or epilepsy, the elephant dung was put on the head and it was believed that it would cure that, like it would put all your neurons back together again or something like that. Well, it's just a myth. I don't know whether it's myth or scientifically proven. So then the, the idea came up of actually making Austrian hats out of this, out of the shit, out of the elephant dung. And so I made four Austrian hats out of elephant dung.